Life with Grandpa, what can be more fun? Living where there's love for everyone. Learning lessons each and every day. Learning from the Word of God, the light to guide our way. Life with Grandpa, what can be more fun? That is why we are happy, that is why that we sing. It's because of Jesus, he's everything. We have a purpose in each new day. Learning how to share and give God's love away. Life with Grandpa, what could be more fun? Living where there's love for everyone. Learning lessons each and every day. Learning from the Word of God, the light to guide our way. Life with Grandpa, won't you come along? Praise the Lord. Hello, children. There's the audience. Let's wave hello. Say hi to the kids. Hello. God bless you. Hi. And look at our pretty, pretty girls today. You're dressed in such nice dresses and your hair looks so nice. Thank you, Lord. Did Sarah fix your hair? Yes, Grandpa. Oh, she did a great job. God bless her. Yes, you look so pretty for all the children that are watching today. And David, you're such a big boy and so handsome. What a beautiful bunch of children you are. Well, praise the Lord. Well, would you like to start the show with a song? Yes, Grandpa. We have a song called All Things Bright and Beautiful. That sounds like a good one. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings. God made their glowing colors, he made their tiny wings. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The purple-headed mountain, the river running by, the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky, the cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, he made them every one. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The tall trees in the greenwood, the meadows where we play, the rushes by the water we gather every day. He gave us eyes to see them and lips that we might tell how great is God Almighty who doeth all things well. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them Thank you, Jesus. Did you children like that song? Wasn't that pretty? About all the things bright and beautiful that God's made, including all you beautiful children out there watching who are faithfully serving Jesus and preaching the gospel. God bless you. Well, David, what are our stories for today? We have two prayer adventures today, the Miracle Ride and the Lost Kite. Honey, you're such a big boy now. You can share your lessons with all the other children. That's wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. So here's David to share with you the story of the Miracle Ride. Hello, children. Would you like to hear some exciting prayer adventures? This first story happened when I was very small. We were living on the beautiful island of Tenerife. What a beautiful sunny day for a walk. Here are some more lemons from the tree in the garden for David to wash. Thank you, Uncle Alf. We can give them to our friends in the village. Auntie Sarah, may we please go to the park too? I'd like to have a ride on the big yellow duck. Yes, Lord willing we can. There, we're all ready. Let's go. 
Not so fast, David. Before we go anywhere, what must we always do? Pray! Yes, that's right. Before we go out of the house, we must always pray that the Lord will not let us have any accidents or catch any bad germs. Dear Jesus, thank you for this chance to have a nice walk. Please protect us and keep us safe. And help us to be a good sample to those we meet. Amen. And Jesus, please help me not to fall down or bump my head. And please give me a nice ride on the yellow duck. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, David, for these nice lemons. You're such a sweet boy. God bless you, Mrs. Garcia. Oh, look, Auntie Sarah. Look, Uncle Al. There's the park. It's quite crowded. Yes, but that's funny. I wonder why nobody is riding on the duck. Excuse me, do you want to ride on the duck? Oh yes, I'd like to. Well, you can't. The duck is broken. We've tried to ride on it, but it won't work. Broken? Oh dear. So that's why there was nobody riding it. Yes, it must be broken inside. Well, I know somebody who can fix it. Jesus can. Let's lay hands on the duck and pray for it. Please, dear Jesus, I would really like to ride on this duck. You said, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So in Jesus' name, please repair the duck for us. Okay, let's put the five peseta coin inside and expect miracles. It works! Thank you, Jesus! Hallelujah! Wow! Thank you, Jesus, for a miracle ride, for five pesetas and a testimony prayer. What a powerful testimony it was to the other little children who were watching. It was completely broken, but the little boy prayed for it and now it works. Wow! I think I'm going to start praying for things, too. When we get home, I'm going to tell Grandpa about it. Wasn't that an exciting testimony? Like Grandpa says, prayer is powerful. When we pray, things will happen and things will be different. God will answer prayer. Thank you, Jesus. He never fails. Do you pray and expect miracles? What a family! Go fighters, go might, to fight for the right. We don't have a sad God, we have a happy God who wants us to be happy too. We don't have a sad God, we have a happy God who wants us to be happy too. He loves life and created it all for you to enjoy. He says, Behold, I have made all these things in perfection for thy pleasure. We don't have a sad God. We have a happy God who wants us to be happy too. We don't have a sad God. We have a happy God who wants us to be happy too. He wants to help and make you happy with his wonderful love and help you to make others happy too with both his love and with your love. 
We don't have a sad God. We have a happy God who wants us to be happy too. We don't have a sad God. We have a happy God who wants us to be happy too. This is our main purpose in life to love God and enjoy Him forever and try to help others to do the same. We don't have a sad God. We have a happy God who wants us to be happy too. We don't have a sad God. We have a happy God who wants us to be happy too. My name is Dr. Koger, so nice to be with you. Today I have an important lesson to share with you from Grandpa. Did you know that this here is a killer and a thief that has invaded the world? Do you know what this criminal is? Yes, white sugar. Why is white sugar a killer and a thief? Because it's not only bad for your teeth just being in your mouth, decaying your teeth from the outside, but it is even worse in the way it helps to decay your teeth from the inside by robbing your blood of calcium. Calcium is what you get from foods like milk and yogurt and cheese that makes your teeth and bones strong. Now, white sugar hides itself in many places. Here are some of the places you can find white sugar. In candies, chocolates, soda pops, sweetened juices, and desserts. The Lord doesn't want us to hurt our bodies by eating white sugar, so here are some good, healthy sweeteners that he made that you can eat. Here we have molasses, and honey, and raw brown sugar. And here's a little story to help you remember today's lesson. Here's a boy who loved to eat candies, chocolates, anything sweet, sweetened drinks and soda pops, ice cream cones and lollipops. But inside these snacks was a deadly sweet it was white sugar, the killer and thief. And soon his teeth began to ache because of all those sweets he ate. White sugar began to decay his teeth, and he was so sorry he ate those sweets. So remember, kids, to eat what's right and pray for a godly appetite. Eat the sweets that are good for you that keep strong teeth and strong bones too. Raw brown sugar, molasses, and honey are sweets you can buy with the Lord's money. Raisins, figs, and delicious fruits are great snacks made just for you. So look out for white sugar, the killer and thief, and eat those things that God made sweet. Of course, now you can get too much of any sweet, even if it's honey, molasses, or raw sugar. Your body can only handle so much, so don't eat too much. And always remember to rinse your mouth well with water after eating sweets. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord that you children like to eat the good things that God's made bananas and raisins and all those nice fruits. Well, are you ready for our next story? Does anyone need to use the bathroom or get a glass of water? Don't be afraid to say so. Okay, then David? Would you like to hear another exciting true story? This happened when I was a small boy living in Tenerife. 
One day, Uncle Alf brought me home a special surprise. Oh, thank you, Uncle Alf. But what is it? Let me finish putting it together and you'll see. Is it a bird? Well, it flies kind of like a bird. It's called a kite. And this one has a nice picture of an eagle on it. See? This afternoon, we'll take it out to the banana groves and fly it. Oh, good. That will be fun. <laughs> Now as soon as Dave lets go of the kite, run towards the wind, Alf, and don't stop running until the kite is way up in the air. Yes, sir. I'm ready. Go! Run, Alf! Oh, no! Auntie Sarah, look! Uncle Dave is throwing the kite away! Ha! <laughs> no, he's not throwing the kite away, because look! The kite is attached to a long string. The string stops the kite from flying away. Uh-oh! Lord, help us in Jesus' name to get this kite up in the air. Amen. We'll try to run a little faster this time, huh? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord! There she goes! Hooray! She's flying beautifully! Thank you, Jesus! Good, Uncle Al! Praise the Lord! She's been flying beautifully now for almost an hour. Oh, Grandpa! I really like flying this kite! It's such fun! Well, maybe we'd better bring the kite down now. I think it's getting a little too windy. Oops! Too late! That strong gust of wind has broken the string. Oh no! It's flying away! Grandpa, what can we do? Well, I'm sorry son, but we've lost it. The Lord gave it to us, but now he's taken it away. The kite is gone. But do you know what we can do, David? We can pray for the kite. Oh yes, Grandpa! We can pray that we can find it. Well, maybe the Lord wants us to pray that somebody else finds it. Maybe the Lord wants some other little boy to have the kite now. But it's my kite. But wouldn't you like to pray that some poor little boy who doesn't have so many toys and blessings as you do will find your kite? And that your kite will make him really happy? Yes, Grandpa. Do you remember that Grandpa quote he learned? Real love prefers... Real love prefers the happiness of others to your own. Dear Jesus, thank you for giving me that nice kite. And thank you also for taking it away so that you can give it to someone else. Please help some little boy to find it who really needs a kite to make him happy. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, here's the exciting ending to this story. A few days later, we were walking through the banana groves, when guess what I saw? Look, Uncle Al! Auntie Sarah! Look over there! What is it, David? What did you see? It's my lost kite! Yes, I can see it. Look, Sarah. It's over there, flying high above the banana groves. And look! A little boy has found it, just as we prayed. Thank you, Jesus. What a wonderful answer to prayer. It must be God who sent me this kite. It was just what I wanted so much. So that was an important lesson I learned about prayer. I learned not just to pray for myself, but to pray more for other people, that the Lord will make them happy and bless them and provide their needs. God bless you. I love you. Let's pray for others. Amen? That's right!
Each one helps the job get done They were having lots of fun Grandpa was the great big spring Isn't that a funny thing? He would make the whole watch go Not too fast And not too slow Not too fast And not too slow Keep on time Gave us a crystal face so we can shine in every place. Show the time to everyone to tell them soon the Lord will come. Keep on time, watch and pray. Safely in a golden case, Jesus wants to keep us safe. Hanging on his golden chain, we'll never stray from God again. Grandpa was the great big spring Isn't that a funny thing? He would make the whole watch go Not too fast And not too slow Not too fast And not too slow Keep on time Davida, I have a puzzle for you. What is it, David? Can you figure out what this says? Vanex, Savex, Vanum, Savum, Okeefmanex? Can you guess? I don't know. What does it say, David? It's a conversation between a waiter and a customer in a restaurant. Hmm. F U N E X S V F X F U N E M S V F M O K I F M N X <laughs> I really enjoyed those testimonies on prayer. Did you enjoy them, children? Yes, Grandpa. God bless you, sweetheart. You're my little angel. Well, I can see that our dear cameraman is giving us the signal that we're almost out of time. Can we sing a song before we go, Grandpa? Would you like to sing a song? Uh, do we have time for a song? Yes, sir. All right, what would you like to sing? We want to hear you sing, Grandpa. Me? You like to hear my old crackly voice? Oh, God bless you. You really do love Grandpa. Okay, uh, since we had a show on prayer, how about a song on prayer? Keep on believing God answers prayer. Keep on believing He's still up there. Sorrows and troubles will soon disappear. Nothing can harm you when Jesus is near. Keep on believing the storm will pass. Look for the rainbow, it will come at last. Trust in His promise was written for you. Keep on believing and praise your way through. Trust in His promise was written for you. Keep on believing and praise your way through. Hallelujah. Well, we've got to go now. Let's wave bye-bye, kids. God bless you. Come on, say bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.
Every day, learning from the word of God, the light to guide our way. Life with Grandpa, what can be more fun? That is why we are happy, that is why that we sing. It's because of Jesus, he's everything. We have a purpose in each new day, learning how to share and give God's love away. Life with Grandpa, what could be more fun? Living where there's love for everyone Learning lessons each and every day Learning from the Word of God, the light to guide our way Life with Grandpa, won't you come along? Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, here we are back again. Same time and same station. Well, it's a different time, but it's the same station. But we're continuing with some more lessons about prayer. Are you all ready? David? Davida? Tetchy? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Such sweethearts. Do you like our lessons on prayer? You, my little angels. Well, I always like to begin our time of fellowship with a song. Would you all like that? Yes, Grandpa. Yes, Grandpa. Yes, Grandpa. Are you going to sing for us, Grandpa? No, not this time, honey. We have a beautiful song from Peter Pioneer. Most of the greatest saints I knew were people who did what they could do. If we've real love for everyone, we'll do whatever needs to be done. I'm ready to go, ready to stay, ready my place to fill. Ready for service, lowly or great, ready to do God's will. So do the dishes and clean the floor And God can show us something more I'm ready for any job at all Whether it's great or whether it's small 
I'm ready to go, ready to stay, ready my place to fill. Ready for service, lowly or great, ready to do God's will. Most of the greatest saints I knew were people who did what they could do. If we rule love for everyone, we'll do whatever needs to be done. I'm ready to go, ready to stay, ready my place to fill. Ready for service, lowly or great, ready to do God's will. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How true. A life need not be great to be beautiful. There may be as much beauty in a teeny flower as in a majestic tree, in a little gem as in a great jewel. A beautiful life is one that fulfills its mission in this world. That is what God made it to be and does what God made it to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, David, since we're continuing our lessons on prayer, did you have any other good lessons that you've learned that you'd like to share? Yes, sir. David is such a handsome boy. Isn't he, girls? Would you like for David to share some more lessons? Yes, Grandpa. Are you all ready? Okay, David. You have the floor. Hello, children. Here's another prayer adventure. I remember one time when I was two and a half years old. Well done, David. You are reading very well. As a result, look what the Lord has given you. It's a new reader. Thank you, Jesus. Look at these nice pictures. Oh, Auntie Sarah, look, look. What is it, David? Why are you so excited? Look, it's a little red bus. Auntie Sarah, I used to have a toy like that a long time ago in another country. Ah, yes, I remember. It was when we were in Tenerife. But when we left Tenerife, you had to forsake your little red bus and leave it behind. Oh, Auntie Sarah, I would very much like to have another toy like that. Well, what does Philippians 4, 6 say? Let your requests be made known unto God. Yes, and so you can pray and ask Jesus to give you a bus. Jesus, I used to have a bus like that a long time ago in a faraway country. Jesus, Jesus, I like that bus. Auntie Sarah, may I see the book, please? Yes, here it is. Here is the bus, Jesus. Please, Jesus, I would like to have that bus. Remember to quote scriptures when you pray. Hold God to his promises. Jesus, it says in Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply all your need. I really need that bus, Jesus. Please may I have a bus just like that? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, David, that's beautiful to see you claim scriptures and put your whole heart and trust in the word. Did Jesus hear my prayer, Auntie Sarah? Of course, David. Jesus hears every prayer, and he always answers our prayers. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. You know, Auntie Sarah, I really believe that Jesus is going to give me that bus. That must be the shoppers back from their shopping trip in town. Hello, everybody. We're back. I'll just go and change my clothes and wash up. But David... If you look in the shopping bag, you might find a special surprise. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I wonder what it could be. Is it this, Auntie Sarah? 
No, I think those are some new indoor shoes for Mommy. Auntie Sarah, I think this must be it. Oh, I wonder what it is. Oh, Auntie Sarah, look, look, it's a red bus. It's just the one I prayed for. That's a miracle, a real answer to prayer. Do you like your Shiner Prize, David? Oh, thank you, Uncle Al. It's super duper. But Alf, how did you know that David had prayed for a little red bus? Oh, really? It must be a miracle. I didn't know. I had just finished shopping and was on my way to meet John when... Oh, look. A toy shop. I would really like to buy David a Shiner Prize, as he has been such a good sweet boy, always so willing to help around the house. But what shall I buy him? There are so many nice toys and books to choose from. Jesus, please give me wisdom and show me which toy you would like David to have. Oh, look, a little red bus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I think David would really like that. Praise the Lord, he never fails. What a wonderful answer to prayer. Jesus, I think you really love me. Thank you, Jesus. Wasn't that a miracle? How the Lord gave me exactly the same little bus that I prayed for? Amen, wonderful. Thank you, David. Did everyone like David's testimony about prayer? Would you like to share the most important lesson you learned from that, David? It really taught me that when we pray, the Lord wants us to be very definite and tell him exactly what we want. God will give you what you ask for and what you have the faith for. John 15, 16. Thank you, Jesus. It pays to pray. Very good, David. Do you know a verse about prayer, Davida? Yes, Grandpa, Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Very good, Dada. She is really bold, a real preacher. How about you, Tetchy? You have a verse for Grandpa? Yes. Would you like to share it, honey? Let's all be real quiet so Tetchy can share her verse. Pray without ceasing. That's wonderful. Well, children, here's a food for fighters about prayer. Pro fighters, pro might, to fight for the right. to be heard. Prayer is something you're doing all the time, no matter what else you're doing. You can pray all the time. You can pray all the time. You can pray all the time. Pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 517. There are lots of things that are totally beyond your control, but not the Lord's. Keep close to the Lord and always ask Him to keep and bless and protect you. You can pray all the time. You can pray all the time. You can pray all the time. Pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5.17 you don't have to be down on your hands and knees Praying frantically to be hurt Prayer is something you're doing all the time No matter what else you're doing You can pray all the time You can pray all the time You can pray all the time Pray without ceasing First Thessalonians 5.17 You can pray all the time You can pray all the time Pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 
tremendous. Thank you, Jesus. You know what, Tetchy? One of the greatest proofs of God's existence is answers to prayer. Isn't that wonderful? Proof that God is there. He answers our prayers. I like to pray. Well, do you like to play? I like to pray. Yes, I know you do, honey. But do you like to play, too? Play? Yes, play. Do you know even play is important? Like get out time, Grandpa. Yes. And would you like to have a special surprise? What is it, Grandpa? We have a little lesson on get out. Would you like to see it? Yes, Grandpa. Yes, Grandpa. Yes. <laughs> My name is Dr. Koger, and if I may, I would like to share with you some important things. Today I wanted to tell you about exercise and play. Do you get out in the fresh air and the sunshine? Let me tell you why you need exercise. Firstly, it makes your heart beat faster, which speeds up your blood which helps carry more food to the different parts of your body and get rid of the waste. Exercise makes you breathe deeply to get more oxygen. It increases your appetite and helps your digestion. And even when you sweat, it's good for you because it gets rid of heat and waste through your skin. So that's just a few good reasons for exercising. Besides, it's so inspiring to get out in the sunshine and the fresh air and to enjoy the trees and the flowers if you can. Let's see what it would be like if someone wasn't faithful to have get out. Here he is and sad to say he doesn't want to go and play. He never even really tries to move around and exercise. All day long he sits inside and wonders why he feels so tired. No fresh air or nice bright sun. He's missing all the fun. His arms and legs grow weak and tired. He doesn't even feel inspired. How sad. But let's see how much happier he was when he did get out. Now he goes out every day. See him run and jump and play. Lots of air and sunshine too. Helps his body be renewed. How his muscles grow so strong as each day he runs along. Out amongst the trees and flowers is how he spends his playtime hours. When he's done, he feels so good, just like everybody should. So, thank you for joining me. Have a happy get out time. See you again. Bye bye. That was fun. Yes, I like to exercise. Exercising your body is important. But did you know something else we can exercise? We've already been talking about prayer. What do we exercise when we pray, David? Our faith. Good boy. He's really got the answers ready, doesn't he? Do you know a good example of exercising your faith? What's it like? Like the baby sucking. You get what you ask for and what you have the faith for. Good, David. Well, does that remind you of another testimony? Do you have any more prayer adventures? The last one was really exciting. Yes, Grandpa. Take her away. Did you know, children, that the Lord not only gives you everything you need, but even everything you want, if you really please Him? This is the story of how the Lord gave me a new tape recorder. It was one afternoon at nap time. Six. It was really fun to record my memory verses on tape, Auntie Sarah. 
It really helps me to review. Oh, it stopped again. Yes, that's the third time it has broken down this afternoon. Well, praise the Lord anyway, and everything give thanks. But Auntie Sarah, we prayed for it to work. Well, David, your little tape recorder is five years old. That's as old as you are. Using it as much as you do every day, it's bound to get old and worn. Maybe the Lord wants you to pray for a new one. That would be nice. But I think I would really miss my faithful little tape recorder. Yes, but it's important that you are able to listen to a good, clear tape recorder so that you can hear word tapes and song tapes at nap time and bedtime and also during the day. Oh! Auntie Sarah, could I have one like Grandpa's? Well, a good tape recorder costs a lot of money. So before we even ask the Lord for such a big gift, we'll have to really pray and make sure we'll be good stewards. Amen. Oh, listen, Auntie Sarah. My little Sonny is working again. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you lie down now and take your nap? My old tape player is worn out indeed. I'd like a new one, but I know that I need to be faithful with what I already have. Be faithful with what I already have. <laughs> Lord, we thank you so much for providing this good meal. We pray that you cleanse it and make it a blessing to our bodies in Jesus' name. Did everyone have a good day? Yes. Thank you, Grandpa. <coughs> Tetchy is choking on her drink. Jesus, please help her. Are you all right now, Tetchy? Yes, Grandpa. Maybe she choked on her drink because she didn't pray for it. It's very important that we learn to stop and pray over everything we eat and drink. Remember that your hands have real spiritual power. That's why I always hold my hands over my food or around my cup when I pray. Yes, sir. That's a very good lesson. Jesus, please bless this drink. And please help me to always remember to pray before I eat and drink. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, now, Maria and I have a surprise for somebody. We were out shopping and we found on sale an extra special gift. We want to give it to someone here tonight, but we just don't know who to give it to. But the Lord told me that there is someone here who really needs it. Oh, Mommy Maria has a good idea. Please, could everyone go to their rooms and get their tape recorders? Then bring them back here to the table to show me. Why does Grandpa want to see our tape recorders, Auntie Sarah? I don't know, but isn't it exciting? Grandpa's surprise, what could it be? Who is it for? Let's go and see. Hmm. Yes, well, what do you think, Maria? Well, I think the person who uses his tape recorder here more than anyone else is David. Oh, my! Yes, I agree. David, because you love to listen to word tape so much and because you're always so faithful to memorize and review, this brand new tape recorder is for you. Wow, Grandpa! It's super! Thank you, Jesus! Look, David, see? It has two big speakers and a radio, just like Grandpa's. Oh, thank you, Grandpa! It's beautiful! It's just like the one I was going to pray for. But Grandpa, it's a miracle. Jesus answered my prayer even before I prayed. Yes, David was going to pray for a new tape recorder, but he hadn't yet. Amen. Well, Jesus often answers before you pray, because he knows you're going to pray. Before they call, I will answer. <laughs> Pray 
Praise the Lord. Jesus is so good to us. But now what shall I do with my dear old faithful Sonny? Ah, yes. Thank you, Jesus. That's a super idea. Here, Davida, I'd like to give my little tape recorder to you. It still works quite well. Oh, thank you, David. I'll take good care of it. Isn't that sweet? David wants to share his little tape recorder with Davida because he loves her and because he doesn't want to hurt its feelings just because it's a little old and squeaky. Yes, thank the Lord for such a good, sweet boy. As long as you do your best for him, Jesus will do his best for you. Jesus is so good to us all. He'll supply all our needs. He's so wonderful. And if we love Jesus first in our lives, He'll even give us our heart's desires. Jesus is so good to us all. He'll supply all our needs. He's so wonderful. Jesus is so good to us all. He'll supply all our needs. He's so wonderful. Yes, Jesus is so good to us and loves us so much that he's willing to let us have almost anything we want as long as we delight ourselves in him and put him first. As long as you do your best for him, he'll do his best for you. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't he wonderful? It's time, it's time for a letter song. It's time, it's time for a letter song. Would you like to hear an amazing thing that happened to me one night? While looking out the hallway window, a cat came into sight. A great big black, huge, beautiful cat, he walked so gracefully. All alone in the pale moonlight, he moved majestically. The amazing cat, the amazing cat. I wondered if he could sense in me a love for those wonderful cats. And as I got that very thought, the cat stopped in its track. Now how he could tell I was there is still a mystery. I was standing in the dark, so how could he see me? his head and looked straight back through the window right at me. And though I could not see his eyes, I felt them look at me. The amazing cat, the amazing cat. Then that cat came and sat by the window in front of me. Staring, staring, glaring, glaring, it was quite scary. Then I prayed and said, Dear Lord, help me not to be afraid. That cat and I staring eye to eye, and not a move was made. I wondered who'd be the first to quit, but his look was too much to bear. So I instead went off to bed to get away from the stare of the amazing cat. The amazing cat. Scientists cannot explain this, how cats can read our minds. But these amazing things are happening, and you may meet sometime. The amazing cat. The amazing cat. The amazing cat.
fantastic. Well, praise the Lord. God bless you each and every one. Isn't the Lord wonderful, children? Isn't he good to us? We've got everything to be thankful for. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we hope you'll come back to see us again. We're so thankful to visit with you via video. We'll be praying for you. Keep going for God. Bye-bye now. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. 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 Every day, learning from the Word of God, the light to guide our way. Life with Grandpa, what can be more fun? That is why we are happy, that is why that we sing. It's because of Jesus, He's everything. We have a purpose in each new day, learning how to share and give God's love away. Life with Grandpa, what could be more fun? Living where there's love for everyone Learning lessons each and every day Learning from the Word of God, the light to guide our way Life with Grandpa, won't you come along? Hello, hello again. Here we are all together again on another Life with Grandpa show. Let's say hello, children. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. God bless you. Hello. Praise the Lord. Well, the children have some more stories and lessons to share with you. And my, don't they look nice today? Thank you, Jesus. I'm wearing my new dress. Me too. Yes, you all look beautiful. Yes, David? You look nice too, Grandpa. 
Thank you, David. Honey, you're really sweet. Shall we start with the song? Yes, Grandpa. Quacky was a duck, and a little duck was he. With fuzzy yellow feathers, as cute as he could be. He lived on a pond down the road not far away. And when I go to see him, this is what he'd say. Quack, quack. It seemed he always knew the way that I was feeling. His love was always true. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. And when I was feeling sad, he always made me glad with the quack, quack, quack. He was like my best friend in after school or play. Quack, he would be waiting to see me every day. I'd sit down beside him and I'd give him a snack. I'd tell him all my secrets and he would answer back Quack, 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 quack It seemed he always knew the way that I was feeling His love was always true Quack, 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 quack And when I was feeling sad He always made me glad with the quack, quack, quack One day my dear duck quacky got sick And though I tried to make him feel better My little quacky died But I see my little quacky When I go to bed and pray He's playing up in heaven I'll be with him there someday Quack, 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 quack It seemed he always knew The way that I was feeling His love was always true Quack, 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 quack And when I was feeling sad He always made me glad with the quack Quack, 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 quack. It seemed he always knew The way that I was feeling His love was always true Quack, 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 quack And if I was feeling sad He always made me glad Whenever I was sad He always made me glad with the quack I see my little quacky when I go to bed and pray. He's playing up in heaven, I'll be with him there someday. Hallelujah, that's a cute little song about a little boy's duck that died and went to heaven. And the little duck is waiting up in heaven to play with his friend when he gets there. Thank the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? When we get to heaven, we'll get to see all our old friends and pets again. And did you know we'll get to talk to the animals in heaven? I'd like to talk to a rabbit. You will. There was a day before the flood when animals were the pets of man. And he could talk to them, and they could talk to him. Like Adam did. Exactly. And that's what it's going to be like beginning with the millennium when you and me and all you faithful children out there will rule the earth with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And that's why these lessons you share are so important. For we'll all use them to teach others now and in the future. Our story lessons today are on obedience and sharing. Yes, three little accidents and the rich fool. Well, those sound like very good stories. Okay, David. Jesus loves you and will take care of you always, even when you're naughty. But sometimes, if you've been disobedient, he'll take care of you with a spanking to try to make you be good. One time, I was playing with my cars before bedtime in Grandpa and Mommy's room. I was two years old. Look, David. Grandpa has a big mountain with the blanket over his legs. You can roll your cars down on it. Look, David, like this. That's fun. I want to do it. Vroom! David, you don't need to throw the car. Just let the car go gently, see? Vroom! David? I said, don't throw the car. Now, I'll try again. Vroom! That's disobedience. David, you had better tell Grandpa you're very sorry. Hmm. David, please tell Grandpa you're sorry. No! Ow! 
Ouch! Jesus, please heal David's head and help it not to hurt or come up in a big bump. In Jesus' name, amen. Whoops, a bonk on the bonkus. Where did you bonk it? Here. Do you think it was the Lord who let you get bonked? Yes, sir. See, you were disobedient, like Jonah. So the Lord sent you a bonk on the head to teach you a lesson. Like he sent a whale to swallow Jonah. You see, David, the Lord won't let you get away with being disobedient and rebellious. He's trying to humble you and teach you a lesson. You were disobedient, so Jesus gave you a little spanking, didn't he? Yes, Grandpa. I'm really sorry. So that was one little accident that happened because of disobedience. The second one happened when we were camping in France. One day, we went out for a walk. Lord, we really claim your promises for our protection. Please help us all to stay together and not have any accidents. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And so off we went. Davida, come back. Davida, you should never wander off by yourself, should you? No, Mommy. Not even Grandpa or Mommy go anywhere by themselves, do they? No, ma'am. This is not the first time this has happened, so I'm warning you to hold Mommy's hand and not wander off again. Agreed? Yes, Mommy. <coughs> Davida, don't run down that gravel hill. <gasps> Davida! Oh, Davida. <laughs> She's bleeding, and her cut is all covered with dirt. And I don't even have a tissue to wipe it with. I'll just have to lick it clean and spit out the dirt. That will have to do until we get home. Please, Lord, heal Davida's cut. Help it not to hurt and please stop the bleeding so that we can get her back to the caravan. Lord, forgive me for not having any tissues. Anyone working with children should always carry cologne and tissues. Thank you, Jesus. Look, the Lord has already slowed down the bleeding. Come on, Davida, I'll carry you home. Back at the caravan, Auntie Sarah washed Davida's cut with clean water. Hold still, dear. Jesus, help her to be brave. Oh, dear. It really is a deep gash. Maybe we should take her to the doctor to have it stitched up. Lord, give us wisdom. Oh, I remember a tip that I once learned. We'll make an egg skin bandage. First, we peel the skin off a hard-boiled egg. Then patch the egg skin in an X shape over the clean cut to close it up. There. Now, with care and prayer and not washing or changing the egg bandage, it should heal up into a brown scab in a few days. We'll have to really pray that there won't be a scar. The next morning at Devotions, we had a talk about the reason why Davida fell and bumped herself. Davida, did you find any good verses about afflictions? Yes, Mommy. Psalm 119, 67. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. And also, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Good. And what lesson did you learn from this accident, Davida? That I shouldn't have been disobedient. I should have held your hand like you said. That's right. And also you didn't tune in to the prayer before the walk, or even say amen when we claimed promises for your safety. And so the Lord had to teach you a hard lesson for your disobedience. Always remember, the right thing is to obey. Thank the Lord that soon afterwards, 
there was no sign at all of the deep gash on Davida's forehead. Surely a doctor would have stitched it, but our God is still a God of miracles. Praise the Lord! The third little accident happened one time when Davida and I were playing rough near a fireplace. Hey! Children, we're having a meeting. Could you please sit or play quietly and come away from that fireplace? It's dangerous. But a few minutes later... Haha! <laughs> Davida, I'm going to get you! Oof! oof. Children, are you all right? Yes. Yes. Well, thank the Lord. You could have been very badly hurt. I warned you to settle down, but you disobeyed and didn't listen. So we're going to have to give you both a good spanking. The Lord says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Jesus spanks us because he loves us and wants us to obey and be good. <laughs> Sorry. We spanked you to help you understand how serious little disobediences are. Imagine what would have happened if there had been a fire burning. You could have both been badly burned. Do you understand? Oh yes, we're really, really sorry. Oh how we cried when we thought how badly hurt we could have been because of our disobedience. And after that, we never went too near the fireplace again. So if the Lord should spank you a little bit or correct you, it's for your own good. It's because he loves you and wants you to be good and obey. So he can reward you with all of his wonderful blessings. Praise the Lord. And so that's the story of the three little accidents and how Jesus loved us enough to spank us. about the three little accidents is a good lesson on obedience for all of us to remember. It reminds me of the story of Joe the machine mechanic. He didn't tell his boss something was wrong with the machine when he was told to report it, if there was, and then he tried to fix it himself. He thought he knew more than the boss and didn't have to obey. So what happened? He blew up the machine. 
Yes, he ended up destroying a very expensive machine because he didn't obey. Nothing short of right is right. Yes, so the right thing is... To, to obey. obey. Amen, amen. Well, David, what's our next story? Our next story is called The Rich Fool. Hello, honey. Hello, David. Hello. Hello, Uncle Al. Did you bring me a surprise? A new car? No, David. I'm sorry. I couldn't get you a surprise today. Honey, Uncle Alf can't bring you a gift every time he comes home. I have to be very careful how I spend the Lord's money. The Lord is very generous, and he gives us the desires of our hearts. But he also wants us to be good stewards of the money he gives us. Remember who sends us the money that we use to buy our food and our needs? The missionaries! Yes, we work hard for them and send them everything they need to preach the gospel. And they work hard to preach the gospel. So the Lord blesses them with enough money to help them to live and also to share with us. So it's the Lord's money and we need to pray over every penny we spend. That's true. Don't worry, Uncle Alf. You don't have to get a Shiner Prize for me every time you go out. That's very sweet of you, David. Now, I have an idea. We can play a fun game with all the cars you do have. Yes, and we can drive them all in a big, long caravan. I'll go and change my street clothes, wash up, and then I'll meet you in the garden. Oh, good. And now something wonderful is about to happen. Are you ready? What is it, Auntie Sarah? Praise the Lord, son. Would you like to read a bedtime story with Mommy and Grandpa? Oh, yes, please. Here's my Bible story book, Grandpa. Well, let's see. Uh, how about if we read this one? The Story of the Rich Fool. Once upon a time, there was a certain rich man who had a very big farm. There was a great harvest that year, and his workers gathered lots and lots of grain. How blessed I am! I'm rich! Sir, you've had such a good harvest. Can you spare a few bags of grain for our families? No, I have to keep it all for myself. But what shall I do? The harvest is so great that I have no room to store it in my barns. Oh, no! I may have to give some away. Ah, I know what I'll do. I'll pull down my old barns and build bigger barns. And in there will I store all my fruit and all my goods. I will say unto my soul, So, you have many riches stored up for many years. Take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But do you know what happened that night, David? No, Grandpa. God said to him, You fool, tonight you will die. Then what are you going to do with all those things that you have stored up? That night he died in his sleep, and he had to leave it all behind. But my plans, my harvest, my barns! You must come with me. You see, he couldn't take all those riches with him. The only way you can take your money with you when you die is if you send it on ahead. How can you do that, Grandpa? By tithing and sharing it with others and spreading the gospel like Sophie the washerwoman. But the rich man didn't share. No, the rich man was so greedy that the Lord took everything away from him. Instead of sharing his goods with others, he decided to build bigger barns to hold more for himself. It's all mine! His sin wasn't being rich and having all those barns. Do you know what his sin was? He didn't want to share. Just a little, please? No, nothing. That's right. 
His sin was the barniness, the selfishness of his own heart. His heart was in the barns because the barns were in his heart. He could have been passing out food to the poor from those barns, but he didn't. So you can give things away and become richer, but you can also hold on to things too tightly and lose them all, like the rich fool. I've got lots of cars, Grandpa. You are rich in cars, David. Maybe the Lord gave you so many so that you can share them. Remember, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Yes, Grandpa. And now I think it's time to go to bed. I know a very good bedtime prayer that helps you commit your spirit to the Lord so you won't be like the rich fool who wasn't ready to die. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray thee, Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I know thee, Lord, my soul will take. In Jesus' name, amen. Good night, dear. God bless you with sweet dreams. Good night, David. Good night, Mommy. Good night, Grandpa. <laughs> Auntie Sarah, do you think the rich fool had cars? He probably had lots of wagons. Oh my, I don't want to be greedy like he was. He wanted everything for himself, so he lost it all. Oh Jesus, please help me to share with others and not be greedy and selfish with the things I do have. Good morning, Davida. I have a surprise for you. Oh, can I see it? I would like to share my cars with you. Which ones do you like? Oh, this one and this one. Now let's play a nice game together. I love you, Mommy. I love you, Grandpa. That's really sweet of you, David. Thank you for that nice, generous present. What present? That nice kiss. A kiss makes a real beautiful gift or present. Really? Better than a car? Yes, presents don't always have to be material things. A present can also be a kiss or a hug or a loving deed. Anything you do to make people happy. Love is the best reward. Love is the best surprise or gift. To be loved is the most precious gift anybody can receive. We show our love for you, David, in lots of ways. By giving you food and clothes, and taking you for walks, and reading to you, and holding your hand, and kissing, and hugging, and smiling at you. Even when we spank you, we do it to help you be good. All these deeds of love show that we care for you much more than when we just buy you a toy. So you should be just as thankful for these loving deeds as you are for toys. Do you understand now that Mommy and Daddy and Auntie Sarah and Uncle Alf give you presents every day that are more important than cars? Oh yes, I understand now. And did you know that it makes big people really happy when little people give them love? One very special way you can show the big people that you love them is by giving them lots of hugs, kisses, and cuddles. Oh, a child's love and affection really encourages and inspires the big people. Your love makes us very happy, David. Thank you, Mommy and Grandpa, for your love. So if you're rich in love, don't be stingy, but share it with others. Give them lots and lots of love and big hugs and kisses. Tell them often that you love them. Tell them thank you when they do things for you. Don't you be like the rich fool. Fill your life with love and you'll have no room for selfishness. The faster you give your blessings away and share them, the more God will bless you. Then the richer you become, the more you can share. You never lose by giving. What a family! 
It's time, it's time for a low letter song. It's time, it's time for a low letter song. In the lonely observatory Is a cute little machine This is her own story She's a pretty little robot Watch her click and spin She's a robot Specially made for him out of the room, she starts to wobble on her suspension, and she makes funny noises just to get his attention. So then he comes back before it gets too late. So her antenna doesn't get bent out of shape. He's in love with a robot Watch her click and spin Ooh, yeah Pretty little robot Specially made for him She rolls on her wheels And follows him around like a magnet Puts in his key that's when she gets excited The robot Watch her click and spin Ooh yeah A friendly little robot Special made for him I wanna tell you about the robot Watch her click and spin Ooh yeah a heavenly robot Specially made for him A pretty, pretty, pretty little robot Watch her click and spin Ooh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Did you enjoy our stories today? We enjoyed sharing them with you. And we'll have more to share with you next time. So, until then, God bless and keep you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. And every day, learning from the Word of God, the light to guide our way. Life with Grandpa, what can be more fun? That is why we are happy, that is why that we sing. It's because of Jesus, He's everything. We have a purpose in each new day, learning how to share and give God's love away. Life with Grandpa, what could be more fun? Living where there's love for everyone Learning lessons each and every day Learning from the Word of God the light to guide our way Life with Grandpa, won't you come along? Praise the Lord. God bless you. Here we are once again. Let's all say hello to the children that are watching. Show them how much you love them. Hello. I love you. Hello. Praise the Lord. That's a lot of love. 
Well, children, we have some very inspiring stories to share with you. But first, how would you like to take a trip to Space City? That sounds like fun. I'd like to go. Me too. All right. Why don't we listen to a heavenly tune from the angels in Space City? Here we go. <laughs> That was fun. Wasn't that fun, children? Yes, Grandpa. Can we go again, Grandpa? Yes, honey. It's so beautiful. And we have heaven all the time, don't we? And we can tell others how beautiful it is, so they'll want to go there too. And now we can show them how beautiful it is with the new posters. Amen. Just like all you children out there are doing, God bless you. I really love you. Well, David, would you like to start our first story for today? Yes, Grandpa. Our first story is called Love Thy Neighbor. Grandpa says that if you love your neighbor as yourself, then you will put yourself in his place. How would you feel if you were he? What would you want and need? This is the story of some of the things that we did to love our neighbors in Tenerife and how it really paid off when persecution came. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear David, happy birthday to you. Thank you Jesus, what a super big cake. It's so big, it will take a long time to eat it all. Well, there's a special reason why Auntie Sarah made it so big. Oh, why mommy? Because the Bible says to love our neighbors. And we thought that you would like to show your love by sharing your birthday cake with the boys in the poor little village school down the road. That's a wonderful idea. Good. Auntie Sarah and Uncle Alf will take you tomorrow. So be sure to dress nicely, be a good sample, and let your light shine before men. <laughs> Jesus, Grandpa said, if you can show people that love exists, then they can believe that God exists, because God is love. So, Jesus, please help us to be a good sample of your love as we go to the school. And please protect and keep us from any accidents, germs, or anything that is not of you, Lord. And Jesus, please help us to make the boys happy. In, In Jesus', Jesus name, name, amen. Amen. So let's remember what Mommy said about being a good sample and giving a big smile to the people we meet. Yes, and let's take the movie camera so that we can film our excursion. If you want to change the world, 
Plant your loving seeds. Go ye into all the world and give to those in need. Those little girls are staring at us. Poor girls. Their dresses are so ragged. Why don't you blow them a kiss for a witness? Jesus loves you. See how happy you've made them? Like the grandpa quote, you can always drop a little love into the hearts of those on your way, and they will know that God has loved them that day. Yes, love never fails. It's getting late. It will be quicker to take the bus. Oh my, she looks really sad. I love you. How sweet. What a sweet boy you are. What is your name? David. Thank you, David. That was a very sweet thing to do, David. That teenage girl looks so sad and in need of encouragement. Does that remind you of another grandpa quote? Showing a little real love. Showing a little real love not only encourages a person for the present, but gives them a brighter outlook on the future. Oh, isn't it fun to put these quotes we've learned into action? Look, we're at the school. I'll find the head teacher and tell her we're here. Oh, fun! The boys are playing football. Oh, look! Their ball is not very good. I can give them my ball, Uncle Al. I have another one at home. That's a very good idea. It will make the boys really happy, and it will make Jesus very happy because you shared. Thank you, David. We really needed a new ball. This will make a super movie. Come, children. We have a special surprise. Yesterday was little David's birthday. Happy birthday, David! And so today, he would like to share his birthday cake with you. Birthday cake. Mmm. Happy birthday, David. Gracias, David. Mmm. I didn't know the school was so poor. Look at their old broken blackboard. Auntie Sarah, can I please do my Bartimaeus skit for the boys? Good idea. That would be a good witness. Children, David would like to do a little skit for you. Hooray! A skit! This is a story from the Bible about a man called Bartimaeus. May I use your ruler, please, ma'am? Yes, of course. Bartimaeus was a blind man. He could not see. He had to beg for food and money every day. Money! Money! One day he heard the sound of many people rushing by. Where are the people going? Jesus is coming! Jesus is coming! When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was near, he called out, Jesus, help me! What do you need, my son? Lord, that I may have my sight. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Praise God, I can see, I can see. Praise God, now I'm going to follow Jesus. Bravo, 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 bravo. And if you would like to follow Jesus, you can ask him to come into your heart. Just pray this little prayer with me. Jesus, please forgive me for being bad. Please come to live in my heart and help me be good and live for you. And make others happy. In Jesus' name, amen. When we got home, we told Grandpa all about our visit to the school. 
and Grandpa. They were so poor that they didn't even have a good blackboard. Well, I'm so happy you gave them your ball. That was such a good sample. It certainly was, David. The Bible says, He that giveth to the poor shall not lack, and he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. We want to give you a little surprise because you were such a good witness. Oh, look! It's a little love necklace, just like Grandpa's. Oh, thank you! See, you can wear it around your neck as a witness. Thank you, Jesus! The next day, I was looking over the garden wall with Grandpa and Uncle Alf when... This is for you, David. David, the little girl wants to give you a flower. Alf, will you please take David down to the road to accept it? I think it's one of the little girls that David blew a kiss to yesterday. For you, gracias. See, David, if you give love, you'll get love. And this is a present from little David to you. It's a little poem book about love, and inside there's a little money gift for you. Oh, gracias, senor. Grandpa says that giving is the greatest of all pleasures. He really likes to give things away. He always made sure that we had lots of nice little Bible books and gifts on hand for our dear village friends and visitors. The more you give, the more he'll give you to give. Sometimes we would pick the lemons off our trees and give them away to the village families. Gracias. We also took photos of our sweet neighbor families in the village and gave them to the families as little love gifts. This is a photo of you at the fiesta. Would you like it for your family album? Oh, gracias, senor. Because we had told Grandpa about how poor the little village school was, Grandpa bought them a large new blackboard. This is from my Grandpa and our family and from Jesus because we love you. Oh, thank you. God bless you. Oh, we really needed a blackboard. And do you remember the movie that Alf took of the boys playing football? Well, one evening we showed it in the village plaza and the children and their parents were so excited to see it. Look, David. There's the girl you showed love to at the bus stop. She looks really happy now. It looks like your sample of love has really cheered her up. <laughs> Several months later, we had to leave Tenerife because of persecution. Reporters from big international newspapers came all the way to the little village, expecting that our neighbors would say bad things about us. Now we'll find out the real truth about Father David. Yeah. <laughs> No, we have nothing bad to say about them. Father David and his family were good Christian people. They donated supplies for our chapel and school. The children at my school miss them so much. The bad things you write are lies. He's a good man, a man of God. He was always so generous. Father David and his family brought love, joy, and goodness to our village. Yes, they were very kind neighbors. We knew them. And so our efforts to love and help our neighbors really paid off when persecution came. Remember that Jesus' main message was his sample of love. Neighbors have to be one, not only by kind words, but also by kind deeds love and consideration. So love thy neighbor. Amen. Do you love your neighbor? Go fighters, go might, to fight for the right. It's impossible for the devil to win over you. Unless you give in to him, greater is he that is in you Jesus. than he that is in the world. He can't win, no, he can't win. He's already.
already beaten by Christ on the cross. He can't win, no, he can't win. Beaten by Christ, risen from the tomb. He can never win as long as you keep fighting. Resist the devil and he'll leave from you. The victory is already ours. Jesus is the victor over all. He can't win, no, he can't win. He's already beaten by Christ on the cross. He can't win, no, he can't win. Beaten by Christ, risen from the tomb. It's impossible for the devil to win over you unless you give it to him. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He can't win, no, he can't win. He's already beaten by Christ on the cross. He can't win, no, he can't win. Beaten by Christ, risen from the tomb. He can't win, no, he can't win. He's already beaten by Christ on the cross. He can't win, no, he can't win. Beaten by Christ, risen from the tomb. Beaten by Christ, risen from the tomb. Praise the Lord. If you show real love for people, you won't have a hard time winning friends. Love never fails. That's right, honey. Okay, David, would you like to begin our next story? Hello, children. I love you. Did you know that sometimes the Lord likes to test our faith, to teach us patience, and to really make us pray? Well, this is just what happened to me once when we were living in Portugal. Would you like to hear the story? David, how would you like to go and see the show at the big casino this afternoon? Auntie Sarah and Uncle Dave are also invited. Oh, yes, Grandpa. Is the magician going to be there? Yes, and we'll see lots of pretty girls dancing and singing too. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Usually small children are not allowed to go into the casino, but the manager and many of the waiters are our good friends. I think they'll let you see the show. Let's go by faith. That's the way, David. Nothing can stop the man of faith. Let's get ready. David, the casino is a very fancy place. There they like children who sit quietly and who don't talk loudly. You need to be a good sample to all of our friends so they'll be happy you came. Yes, Auntie Sarah. And we really need to pray that they'll let you in. Lord, you said that you'll open a door that no man can shut. We pray that you'll please make a way for David to go into the casino and watch the show. In Jesus' name, amen. And help me, Jesus, to sit still and be a good boy. In Jesus' name, amen. So off we went to the casino. It was a big, fancy restaurant and dance hall. But as we were going in... Excuse me, miss. Only children over six years old are allowed in. Oh, really? He's very well behaved. Hmm, well... Pardon me, madam. As a rule, young children are not allowed in the showroom. He has permission. If he doesn't behave, I'll take him out. And now to start off the show. Oh, we have to go now and serve the tables. Well, we'll let him stay. He looks like a good boy. They are nice people. Praise the Lord, Auntie Sarah. They let me stay. Yes, the Lord answered your prayers. You even put feet to your prayers. Yes, I walked right in. But Auntie Sarah, who gave us permission? We have the Lord's and Grandpa's permission. Oh, yes. Look, Grandpa, there's Elsa, our friend. And remember Tanya? She visited our house, too. Look, there she is. We're happy to see you, David. You won't be heard to say. Just look at all the doves the magician pulled out of his hat. Grandpa is a good magician, too, like Merlin. Yes, I have a magic wand. Your magic wand is God's word. Yes, the most powerful force in the world. 
Did you like the show, David? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you for bringing me. You're welcome, son. It's time to go home now, but I have another little idea. The other day, I saw a beautiful little pedal motorcycle with nice training wheels and a shop window not far from here. Why don't we all go and see it? A motorcycle? Wow! May I have a motorcycle, Grandpa? David, don't forget to say, may I please? Yes. May I please have a motorcycle? All right. God willing. Let's go now. Wow! Here's the motorcycle, son. Oh, may I ride on it, please? May I? Oh, the seat looks a little high, but maybe we could put wooden blocks on the pedals so you can reach them with your feet. Uh-oh. Well, praise the Lord. David, the store is closed. We'll have to wait until tomorrow. But I want the motorcycle now. David, it looks like we won't be able to get the motorcycle today. But Lord willing, Uncle Alf and Auntie Sarah can come back with you tomorrow. Then you can buy the motorcycle. But I want it now. Son, we can't always have everything we want the minute we see it. Sometimes the Lord likes to keep us waiting to test our faith. But it's exciting because then we can look forward to what the Lord is going to do. David, remember what you learned about faith this afternoon? You had the faith to see the casino show and they let you in, didn't they? Yes. And remember the grandpa quote we learned about patience? Yes, patience takes faith. Then you should remain strong in faith. If the Lord wants you to have the motorcycle, you'll get it. Here, David, this is a 1,000 Escudo bill. Tomorrow, Lord willing, you can come and buy the motorcycle with this money. This money is like a promise. It's the guarantee of faith. You don't have the motorcycle with you right now, but you have the promise in your hand. When the store opens, you can come and trade it for any toy you want. Faith is like the money of heaven. You can exchange it for the things that you need from the Lord. But the Lord also knows when you need them, and he wants you to wait until it's the right time. Patience shows faith. David, remember Hebrews 11.1? 1? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence means the proof. Grandpa, this is the proof. I went home that night and tried to wait patiently for the next day. But the Lord still had more lessons that he wanted to teach me. This is what happened. Here we are, David. The motorcycle is still there. Praise the Lord. Oh, no! The store is closed again. What should we do, Auntie Sarah? Well, I think we are going to have to wait another day. But don't worry. I know the Lord will open the door. Remember, God's delays are not denials. So sometimes we just have to wait. Grandpa, the store was closed again today. I see. So you're waiting on the Lord. God bless you, son. Can we go and get the motorcycle tomorrow? Well, son, I've been thinking. Maybe the Lord has another reason for having that shop closed. Not only to teach you patience, but perhaps because he has something better for you. Maybe that motorcycle is a little too big for you. Maybe he knows you need a smaller one. All right, Grandpa. Tomorrow we can look for a smaller one. Oh, Uncle Alf, I like this shiny blue one. Yes, it's pretty, but I think that it's still too big for you. Let's try another shop. Now, David, have faith. Look, Uncle Alf, here's another motorcycle. 
Well, I'm not too sure about this one either. It's so big and it doesn't look very strong. If we're not sure it is God's will, then we should keep looking. Here's the one we saw with Grandpa. Lord, please help me to make the right choice. Auntie Sarah, I don't think I want a motorcycle anymore. Can we go into the store? Maybe there's a nice car I can have. All right, let's go in. Look, a toy truck. So big, I can ride on it. Look, David, even though this truck is pretty and big, it's not very well made and it costs a lot. Hmm. Don't you think it would be a waste of the Lord's money to choose an expensive toy that will soon break? Yes, let's keep on looking. Shopping takes a lot of faith and patience, but you're doing very well, David. Which one, Lord? Oh, what a nice little tractor. Oh, thank you, Jesus, a tractor. That's what I've always wanted. And I can play farm with all my toy animals. Uncle Al, this is what I like the most. That's a good choice, David. It looks nice and strong, and it's not very expensive. Good for you. And I know a little piece of land in the garden that we can plow with the tractor. Look, Grandpa, this is my new tractor. It really runs well. Praise the Lord. Oh, look at this. You picked a very good toy, son. It looks very nice. You see, you patiently waited in faith for God's best, and that's what he gave you. It may not be as big as the motorcycle, but it's what I really wanted. Well, praise the Lord. You were also a good steward of the Lord's money. God bless you, David. That's the kind of faith God likes, that when there is a choice or a decision to be made, great faith chooses God's best in spite of all the other choices. So this experience taught me a good lesson on faith and patience, to give God a chance, wait on the Lord, and give Him time to answer my prayers. And if we are the Lord's children and we let Him choose, He's going to choose that which is best for us, and that which will make us the most happy. God knows, He hears, He cares. He loves His girls and boys. He gives His very best to those who let Him choose the toys. Beautiful! It's time, it's time, for a Lolet to song. It's time, it's time, for a Lolet to song. It's often thought frogs are just ugly and small But I have found out that it's not true at all They sit out my window and sing all night long I don't mind at all hearing their happy song No matter how lonely are we No matter how small and ugly Together we sing beautifully in rhythm and harmony No matter if you're just a frog Sitting alone on a log We lift up our voice to the sky To our loving Creator on high They sound like the angels, a great swelling chorus In waves of crescendo they do their best for us Away in the dreamland on the song of the frogs You can go if you listen, just fly right along No matter how lonely are we No matter how small and ugly Together we sing beautifully In rhythm and harmony No matter if you're just a frog Yeah.
enjoyed our time together, didn't we, children? Oh, yes, Grandpa. It was fun. Thank the Lord. Amen. Well, I sure enjoyed it, and I hope that you children out there enjoyed it, too. We really love you and are so thankful for each and every one of you. God bless and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you.